Welcome to the Rational Response Squad. I am one of your hosts, Brian Sapient. And I am Rook Hawkins. And we are the Rational Rational Response Squad. Squad. On this show today, we were not able to have Mike in for the whole show, but we will have Mike in a moment in a recorded segment of Crazy Ignorant or Lying. Before I get to that, I just wanted to remind you folks to join us in the chat room while we have our live shows. And, uh, you know, hang out with us there at www.rationalresponders.com. In order to access our chat room, you have to have a membership to our website which is completely free and that allows you to post on our forums and gain access to our downloads as well with us on the line now is lewis rapucci lou is uh the host of a little game show we like to play here called crazy ignorant or lying you i can, love this game yeah, this is can, awesome you visit his website at myspace.com forward slash lewis rapucci uh, lewis underscore rapucci and that's l-o-u-i-s underscore r-e-p-u-c-c-i what is up lewis how you doing buddy hey how you guys doing good how about yourself good. wonderful wonderful so explain crazy ignorant or lying game to us sure no problem this is something that we get started on uh free thought form on myspace um and every once in a while when somebody would pop up in the media with kind of a uh, nutty stupid or completely false uh, religious slant would pop up in the news, we would go ahead and run Crazy Ignorant or Lying. And, uh, <laughs> it's a real simple game. Um, the way it works is I throw uh, a name to the audience, in this case, uh, you three fine gentlemen, and uh, we have Who's a round talking of about? guessing <laughs> with whether or not um, this person is crazy, uh, which would be full well completely believes word for word everything in the Bible is true, <laughs> uh, yet has all the information at, at their disposal that... Uh, illustrates the fact that it's clearly specious, um, ignorant, which would be full well believes the Bible and has literally never taken the time to understand it fully, uh, possibly never read it, uh, <laughs> or just doesn't have the capacity to, to really uh, get the, the bigger picture, um, or lying. Uh, and that would be someone who full well understands that the Bible is completely full of shit, um, yet exploits it and exploits its believ- believers for uh, personal gain. Um, it's a good time. Once in a while, we play with fake celebrity guests um, as judges. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be the judge uh, for you three guys, and I've got uh, three names for you uh, to start off with. Cool. Oh, that's great. And uh, are we going to put money on this, guys? We should definitely put money on this. All right, yeah. You want to put like something like so the loser has to read Bible passages or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do. Uh, I, I was raised Catholic, so let's do the, the loser has to do. Uh, let's, let's give him penance, like penance? five Hail Marys and all that. <laughs> oh man, I do like I still it. remember I like this? I like, I it's been so long since Hail I've Mary been in confession. I was it's programmed into me. I can I can rattle them off like that. Yeah, man, Google, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Google dot com will find it for you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, so go ahead, test us. In fact, uh, do you guys want do you guys want note paper here? Yeah, let's get note paper. Yeah, some paper here. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that sounds good on the radio. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. All right, do you need a pen? I think we, I think we need some writing utensils. Yeah, I need it. Okay, all right, all right. It's not going to help you. I've got this game wrapped up. So. You got it wrapped up. <laughs> so, so what happens if there's a tie? Uh, then you we're both both equally tie? stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I can only give you guys a tiebreaker. Okay. Oh, that works. All right. All right. So let's play. All right. Crazy, all right. ignorant, or lying with your host Louis Rapucci. Uh, welcome to the party. All right. Uh, our, our first name tonight is fairly easy and fairly well known, and I'm sure you guys could run circles around him. Uh, Pat Robertson. Oh. Is Pat Robertson crazy? Is he ignorant or is he lying within the context of Christianity? All three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, that's it's got to when you reduce it down. It's got to be one okay. or the other. Okay, so who's who's the next guy? Because because you're going to give us three guys, and right. within the three, each guy only fits one category. So we're going to have exactly. we're going to have one crazy person, one ignorant person, and one lying person. By the time we're done, right? right? Okay, great. Right. All right. Number two, the second name for this set of three is uh-huh. Ray Nagin, the mayor of the Big Easy down in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Okay, Ray Nagin. All right. The third contestant tonight is Jesus of Nazareth as. Jesus, the character in the Christian Bible. Ooh, I think I've I've Jesus got this wrapped up. So, uh, uh, so the first round here, what we're going to do is we're going to give our answers, and then afterward, you're going to give us hints, and we we'll, we'll adjust our answers if we choose. So, uh, I've got Pat Robertson is lying. Okay. Ray Nagin is ignorant. Okay. And Jesus of Nazareth is crazy. Rook, what do you got? I have uh, Jesus of Nazareth as crazy, Pat Robertson as ignorant, 
and uh, Negan as lying. Okay, Mike? I've got Pat Robertson as crazy, Jesus as lying, and Negan as ignorant. So none of us match. That's perfect. Okay, so go ahead and g- give us the hints, and uh, we'll, we'll, right. we'll adjust our answers if we choose. All right, and I will tell you, one of you gentlemen has it correct. Oh, wow. It's me. All right. okay. No, it's me. Um, <laughs> for Pat Robertson, I, I kind of went back in the day. Everybody knows about the, the crazy bullshit he's been spouting for the last six to eight months. Uh-oh, that's a hint, isn't um, it? Crazy. Yep. Uh, hurricanes, all sorts of crap. But uh, if you go back to the mid-60s, you've got stuff like Pat Robertson saying, uh, you say you're not supposed to be nice to, or you're supposed to be nice to the Episcopalians and the Presbyterians and the Methodists and this and that and the other thing. Nonsense. I don't have time to be nice uh, to the spirit of the Antichrist. I can love people who hold false opinions, but I don't have to be nice to them. Nice to them. All right. Uh, let me give you another good Pat Robertson one. Uh, this was about Planned Parenthood. It teaches kids to fornicate, people to have adultery, every kind of bestiality, homosexuality, <laughs> lesbianism, everything the Bible condemns. And then uh, one the more stuff. great Pat Robertson quote. Uh, this this is good for the feminists out there. Um, uh, the, this is Pat Robertson once again. The key in terms of mental ability is chess. There's never been a woman grandmaster chess player. Once you get one, then I'll buy into some of the feminism. So those are some awesome uh, Pat Robertson quotes from back. Hey, you time. really got me on crazy now. I was I was online the first time, but I got I got to move easy. towards crazy. But they yeah, all it's have tough. An element of the three. You know, while 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 you're on Pat Robertson, just for our listeners sure. out there, in case they weren't aware, the Rational Response Squad is all about eliminating irrational thought uh, <laughs> off the face of the earth. And uh, Pat Robertson is actually part of our. And I'm going to pull it up. You'll hear some. He's, he's an irrational he, priest. He's a priest all his own. Own, yeah. <laughs> Yes, he's, yes. He and Jerry Falwell are the third most important irrational precept that need to be eradicated off the face of the earth. So one thing is for sure: whether he's lying, ignorant, or crazy, he is irrational. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, you can see our rational precepts at www.rational. Responders.com and join us in the chat room right now if you're listening on our live broadcast as well. If you are a registered member, which is free at www.rationalresponders.com. So go ahead, uh, Lewis, uh, move on to Ray Nagan. Give us some clues on Ray Nagan. All right, here's some, here's some great Ray Nagan quotes. Uh, and these are fairly well known. All right, surely God is mad at America. He sent us a hurricane after hurricane after hurricane, and it's destroyed and put stress on this country. Um, right after that, he followed with. Surely he doesn't approve of us being in Iraq under false pretenses. But certainly he's upset at black America also. We're not taking care of ourselves. And finally, uh, the, the, the clincher for Ray Nagin. This is my favorite Ray Nagin quote. God wants New Orleans to be chocolate and black. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, did, that, did, that, did those quotes affect your uh, opinion at all, Mike? Have you changed uh, it all? Yes, I, I've actually changed Okay, because I because I'm totally he's got me totally screwed now because they're all crazy to me. It's not an easy game to win. So but, go, uh, I'm, I'm just amazing powers answers. of perception are needed to <laughs> cut through the layers of bullshit. I, I'm definitely keeping my answers. Yeah. Okay. So go, go ahead. Go, give us Jesus of Nazareth hints as well. All right, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, let's see here. I could quote pretty much anything in in any of these. Uh, <laughs> I was just saying where to start, <laughs> but. What I'm going to focus on is not necessarily uh, his uh, attitudes towards morality um, or even egalitarianism, but let's go with Jesus of Nazareth repetitively uh, claims to be the son of Yahweh, the Jewish war god uh, from the Old Testament. Um, there are translation uh, concerns with this, with things like son of man um, and the usual mystical Bible bullshit, but I think it's fairly safe to say that the character Jesus of Nazareth in the Bible um, over and over again claims to literally be the Son of God. Shit. And that's all I really have to say for Jesus. I really want to change this, but I don't know. I so want to change this. You got to tell me afterwards if I'm right. Now they're all crazy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. I'm, crazy, crazy, fucking crazy. I'm going to make I'm going to make a change, but but regretfully I'm making the change. So go go ahead, Mike. What do, what do you got again now? What are your final? I I was going to switch him up, but I've got to I'm going to have to stick with what I had. I think um, I'm matching you now. Go ahead. Pat Robertson, uh crazy. Uh-huh. Ray Nagin ignorant yeah jesus lying i now match mike so go ahead rook you i match mike now i i changed uh, i really didn't want to change it's close but i changed go ahead rook what do you got um i'm sticking with what i had originally uh jesus crazy pat robertson ignorant and nagin lying okay so you're gonna lose okay go ahead Liz. <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah. all right well uh 
if we were doing a poll, the audience, uh, the audience would be correct. Um, Mike, you and Brian have it correct. Pat I was Robert. right. Yeah! I was Ray right Ray. off the bat. Uh, <laughs> Ray Megan <laughs> is ignorant, and Jesus of Nazareth is a liar. Nice. Yeah, you know, I had Pat Robertson as lying as first, but you really, I mean, you even embedded the kind of the clue there on yeah. Pat Robertson saying that he said some crazy shit well, in the I, last few years. I almost uh, changed it to lying with for Pat for uh, Robertson. But th- what what really tipped it off is how he was, you know, and you could you could say Jesus was crazy for saying he was the Son of God. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But you would you same. you would be lying. You you would know. You know, I mean, you kind of got to know. You you know that you're just pulling this out of your ass. <laughs> you know that. You're well, what about just, what about the Jesus that's <laughs> coming on the uh, show? Yeah, of course, he we, might not know. He might <laughs> <laughs> literally crazy. That's why I didn't want to change it. And like I said, there's an element of the three in all of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> crazy uh, um, runs rampant. <laughs> cra- I guess you have to be crazy. popular <laughs> answer, yeah. <laughs> Well, L.A., uh, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of the Rational Response Squad. That was fun. Hey, no problem, guys. We look forward to having you on another uh, another game for Crazy Ignorant or Lying. Yep. You I'm owe us some. I'm looking forward to it. Rook, Mike, Brian, you guys are awesome. That was hey, fun. Uh, Thank no you. Problem, man. Good work. Hey, you too. You too. All right. Rook, you owe us some Hail Marys here. <laughs> <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, loves with you. That's right, that one. This is the fruit of the womb, Jesus. <laughs> Holy Mary, Mother of God, loves with you. <laughs> Wait, could you do me a favor and not subject me to it? <laughs> The Rational Response Squad has taught me that I don't have to say under God in school when I pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Rational Response Squad can be found at www.rationalresponders.com. Check them out today. All right, and that was Crazy Ignorant or Lying. We are back now off the uh, pre-recorded tape. We'll get Jared Paul on the phone here in a moment, but before we do, I just want to remind you out there, the free-thinking musicians that are listening, if you have a free-thought song or a free-thought-themed album, something that has some sort of free-thought or philosophical reference to it, atheism, Jesus never existed, you know, stuff like this here. Lies of the devil. When Jesus supposedly rose, was sold in a few more bodies, but no other historical report recorded this mythological contorted story. Oh, oh glory. glory! Surely someone would have noticed during the resurrection that the earth shook with black skies, and there's some questions like why did this event slip everyone's minds and only reach of your people when he healed the blind? And the why didn't they learn to write it all down? And everybody else who saw him walk through the towns remained silent. He seemed Someone should have noticed and let more than one spread. Jesus never existed. The evidence is missing. So listen up, all you motherfucking Christians. And if I'm wrong, I'll take it back. I'm just asking the questions. Nobody likes to ask. So if you have uh, music a little bit like that, you know, Jesus never existed type stuff. Yeah, good stuff. I like yeah. this stuff. Uh, you know, get in touch with us at rational response squad at hotmail.com. We'd love to feature you on the show and, uh, you know, plug you a little bit. And so. With that said, we will pull Jared Paul up on the phone. And in fact, that last song was uh, Uncle Scam's Jesus Never Existed, and they will be on here in a future show. They just actually just sent me their song through email right now. So yeah, that's, that's really good. I like the song. All right, man. And uh, yeah, we'll take a quick commercial break to break this up, and we'll have Jared Paul right back with us. I am Luigi Gascioli, and I am a swing at the Catholic Church in Italy. You are listening to Rational Response Squad. Right, on the line with us now, we have Jared Paul. Jared hails from Providence, Rhode Island. Jared, with me as well as one of my partners, Rook Hawkins. How's it going, man? Excellent, Rook. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Real like your music. Oh, like your, like you, your man. rhymes, man. Jared, before we get into your music, you just recently attended the International Globalization Against the War. How was that? Uh, it was excellent. There was a, a good turnout all over the place from... You know, it's it fantastic to come home and jump online and, and see that there were uh, events so well attended in so many different cities all around the world. I was in uh, in New York City. There was definitely a couple thousand people there. A couple thousand people showed up in Boston, a bunch in Chicago, L.A., uh, London, Rome, all over the place. And it was just really good to, to see that. So I'm curious. Did you see any arrest made? Uh, no. That's good, man. Like, 
That is good. Much better at their at their game. You know, they they've got uh, almost as many uh, undercover and uh, on duty overtime police officers as as there are protesters nowadays. There's bike cops and uh, bicycle cops and horse cops and uh, aerial cops, cops on roofs, cops in suits, and uh, they have everything uh, roped off and uh, sectioned off pretty efficiently to keep those situations to a minimum. Yeah, I noticed they, they place undercover cops in the crowd as protesters so that they Absolutely. can kind of, yeah, figure out who's doing what. Kind of scary to know, though, when you're at a protest. Really, you got to watch what you say. You got to watch what you do. You don't know who's standing next to you. Some freedom of speech, right? Well, I mean, you have the freedom of speech, but, you know, uh, I think they're looking for you to, like, if you throw a Molotov cocktail through a window or something like that, you know, that, yeah. uh, you know, you're the guy that's going to get arrested. So, right. And I mean, deservedly. So, oh, of course, you can't keep away from the actual protest going on. There's always a bad apple somewhere. But, you know, sometimes like, I was reading, I was reading um your blog here, Jared, and uh, I see that you got arrested during a, a silent protest. Yeah, actually, for the listeners, before Jared, you go into that, you can uh, visit Jared's website at myspace.com forward slash Jared Paul. Definitely check it out right now as we talk to you and hit the pause button as soon as the uh, music loads up because we've been playing plenty of his songs here. But, Jared, you got arrested at a protest? Uh, yeah, uh, on more than one occasion. Um, you know, it's not necessarily the goal to get arrested, but sometimes there are those situations that are unavoidable. Uh, in, in a particular instance that's up on the site, um, you know, I'm part of a local, uh, a small local group called uh, Provide Action, you know, and we, um, at the time I was actually doing an independent radio show called The Agenda for 90.3 FM, which is a URI radio, and our group covered the whole Republican National Convention for the week, uh, and on the, uh, the major day of action, which was the Tuesday, um, you know, we were taking part in a, in a silent um, peace vigil from Ground Zero uh, to downtown, you know, and uh, <laughs> a premeditated attempt uh, or uh, directive. They ended up collecting over 1,700 people that day. And what happened was as soon as they got the, uh, the when I say they, I mean the NYPD, um, as soon as we took off, you know, we were on the sidewalk. And it was very, again, you know, it was very it was silent. It was not uproarious. It was not, uh, you know, rabble rousing or anything. Um, you know, they didn't, they gave us no order to disperse, no instruction, no anything. Um, two large groups of cops that were hidden came out, one from behind us and one from in front. And they sectioned us all off with this orange netting. Um, and unbeknownst to us, I mean, at the time that this was happening to uh, probably about 20 other groups all over the city, you know, and uh, so we were made to stay there for over an hour. The police had direct orders to not answer any questions. The only time that they could acknowledge us was if there was a medical emergency. Uh, we were taken to uh, a prepaid for and pre-rented house called Pier 57. Uh, they had uh, large pens with 15-foot-high uh, mesh net fencing and razor wire on the top of them. And I, I was made to stay there for uh, probably about 27 hours. Is that, and, is, that the, uh, is that the building that I heard of that, that uh, there was, like, asbestos in that building or something? something? So there was something, uh, like, kind of un, unsafe about that building. I forget what it was. Asbestos, and also there was... Uh, you know, like you know, like in a warehouse, they have a particular type of flooring. Well, this whole this whole place was 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 gutted, so the floor was ripped up. Yeah, you know, all the chemical tar and everything that um, connects the tile to the ground, as well as everything from the machinery that used to be there that that leaked in, that was on on what served to be the, the floor. This is a major story because this was, you know, considered to be a violation of your constitutional rights that day. If I. <laughs> More than to say the least, right? And then I'm actually uh, actually winning. I'm part of a class action lawsuit against the city of New York and Mayor Bloomberg currently. And uh, three days ago, actually, uh, I just forego uh, or or forewent my opportunity to settle. They offered me a two thousand five hundred dollars settlement because they're trying to uh, buy off as many of the people as possible. Uh -huh. but we have a really excellent case built up, and I, I laughed at it. You know, there's no way they're um, I'm taking my chips off the table and I'm, I'm not interested in, in any sort of amount of money that they're, that they're giving to me. The idea that, you know, you can get an order, um, for PR 
to make a current administration look good when they've chosen to have their convention uh, in the same city as 9-11 to, to get good press off of it. And the idea that they can give an order to have 1,700 people arrested and lose an entire day of their life behind bars just so that doesn't mess with um, the one hour that the president will be in town is is unacceptable, it's illegal, and uh, I'm, I'm going to see this thing all the way through. And of course, you can't put a price on that time for your right to speak up out against such a disgusting event when, when George Bush used the guise of uh, 9-11 to uh, hold the RNC convention in New York. So, okay, so it was ridiculous the way they did that in August 2004, and you know, if I can find a clip of some of their words in that speech, um, I can probably find a clip of how many times they used the word terrorism and, uh, you know, uh, 9-11 in, in their yeah, speeches. It was ridiculous. It was, I mean, I remember seeing clips where it was just like That's back to back about. to back to back. It was, that was all they talked about at that convention. It was ridiculous. It, oh, I found it. Here, I'll play for you. In the heart of this great city, we saw tragedy arrive on a quiet morning, September the 11th. September the 11th, September the 11th. September 11th, September 11th, September 11th, September 11th, September 11th, September 11th. 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 September 11th, September 11th, September 11th. September 11th, September 11th. September 11th. 11th. September 11th. September 11, 2001. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam 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 Hussein. War and danger. Continuing danger. Hour of danger. Very, very dangerous world. A grave new threat. Horrific acts of atrocities, murderous regimes dedicating to killing us, tyranny and terror, slaughtered thousands, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, weapons programs, the deadliest of weapons, terrible weapons, nuclear weapons, nuclear weapons, poison gas, torture chambers, mass graves, deadly technologies, radical ideology of hate, terror of threats, terror, 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 war on terrorism, war against terrorism, global war on terror, global terrorism, 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 the evil Terrorists, 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 totally took our focus off of what's important in this country right now. It's uh, it's unfortunate that most of the America bought it too. Yeah, obviously they did. So, have a bumper sticker. I have a bumper sticker. I got it at evolvefish.com. It says, never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. Hey, look at the Nazi party. Oh, Godwin's Law again. Damn, <laughs> always invoke that. Well, I think we'd be, uh, you know, we'd be remiss not to mention is, um, are, are the bike kids and, uh, and, and the protest kids. I'm, I'm all about working in the system and letter writing campaigns and phone calls because that's how you scare your senators and, and representatives uh, with the threat not to not to vote. But um, as you were talking about before, you were saying that you know the cops are there, the undercovers are there to make sure that if somebody throws a Molotov cocktail, then they bag them, and that's uh, it's it's off the mark. Nobody in America, uh, especially the protests, are uh, underwhelmingly um, violent or aggressive. Almost nothing is ever broken. Um, almost nothing is ever destroyed here. There's just like uh, you know, groups of, of concerned people, and they're really there to mark down faces, to take down information about organizers, et cetera, et cetera. There's no reason for them to have highly automatic weapons there like they do. It's a, it's a, it's a scare tactic, and it's there for a bunch of different, uh, similar like reasons. But the, the thing is, is everybody wants to talk about how scary the anarchists are, those anarchists dressed all in black, uh, or these, uh, you know, these, uh, bike kids, you know, and and the idea that these kids are some of the ones who are willing to give up an entire two weeks of their life or an entire week to uh, 
to protest. And, and you know, they, they were, uh, the church on 2nd and 10th at St. Mark's, there was a, a conversion center there. And, uh, you know, there were kids there all week long. There were anywhere from, from two to, two to four hundred kids from around the country who made it a priority just to say, everything is wrong with the way that this country and this world works. I'm not going to be a part of it. And the, the best way for me to gum up the works right now is, is for me to be here. Um, and it's, uh, they're out there. And right now, even though it's not getting much press because the, the, the bourgeois media or the, the corporate media is in, is, uh, in, in prominence, the amount of actual com- committed protest kids has never been higher since the 60s as it is right now. Well, that's great. That is that is really great. That's what we need. Hey, Jared, listen. Uh, let's play. Uh, let's play a song for uh, the audience. Hey, I haven't had a chance to hear your vibes yet. Uh, this uh, this next song coming up is "Jesus in a Bowl of Germs" uh, by Jared Paul. You could check him out at myspace dot com forward slash Jared Paul. Uh, additionally, you can download his music from our website as a registered member www dot And when we come back, uh, Jared will give us a little heads up on uh, what made him write this song and. Uh, a little bit more about what it's about. Sounds great. Pictures of fields without fences. Shangri-La. And Jesus. Jesus in a bowl of germs. Don't get scared, Dad. (laughs) After all, God loves this hole of worms, but hates counting black sheep who refuse to follow the shepherd. Who heard little lambs into slaughter? Listen to the silence of the man's life. Is a serial killer far too complex to expose any logical pattern below Saturn and Mars? There are stars dominating the tunnel vision of cast obstruction, and Jesus might have been a biological weapon of mass destruction, specifically designed to wipe out millions with vanity and pride. Lab engineered and born, advanced chemistry in a bowl of germs like hybrid corn, complete with hidden agenda beneath the surface, lurking and smirking under a crown of thorns. The crucifixion was a hoax, a cruel joke, shot poison rosebud, emanating smoke. Green and only begotten sun soap, son. Come and wash your sins away. Said the spider to the flying rows of holy Roman hope bugs. Let's see if we can give Noah's old flood a run for its money with the first drop of cold blood. From the cross began a damn birth. The contamination spread without AIDS, hospital orderlies, or cancer. Sticks and stone moving angels, but no bones for artifacts or relics. Just a vacant hole on Easter Sunday and a note about his rising soul. Sounds pretty fishy. Stand atop the mountain, feed me loads of. Bullshit. Our last meal was a feast at a table headed by a lupine figure hiding in fleece. No one ever thought to check Jesus for the sign of the beast. No one ever lifted his hair and looked beneath. It was there on his neck. No one cared or was even looking for proof. What? You didn't expect Joe and Mayor to volunteer the truth. And Judas did not hang from his own noose. It was just made to look that way. Jesus Christ, he was a planned device. Schizophrenic, double-edged sword, prophet, and antichrist. Good, but ultimately evil. With multiple people within shouting orders. Leading the flock over the border and through the woods into the land of honey, milk, and slaughter. Selling water. For wine in between blackout gorges on swine, eventually leading up to crusaders with torches and line, all the way to Jerusalem from north of the Rhine, infected by motives that were all but divine. And the same virus has still got the sons and daughters of time, my life support waiting for orders to die. They struggle to stay afloat while their savior keeps walking on by. On top of the water, kicking salt in their eyes. It's all in the mind state. They're all still alive, but planning their own wake, waiting for the wave of an apocalypse that already came to break. Fuck Armageddon, life is heaven and hell The only fate is what we make uh, The only fate is what we make Fate is what we make The only fate is what we make The only fate is what we make Fate is what we make Your essence was conceived and born to breathe In pictures of fields without fences It remains relatively unconcerned With this non-existent God-forsaken hole of worms Natural selection has you headed for Shangri-La Don't settle for Jesus in a bowl of germs don't settle for Allah, I'm on La Vishnu or Abraham in a bowl of germs. Don't settle for anything less than universal respect for every living creature that has breath in its lungs and chest, regardless of race, sex, preference, or whatever the fuck it says in ancient text. Ancient text. Ancient text. All right, the song you just heard was Jesus in a Bowl of Germs by Jared Paul. We are on the phone with Jared Paul. Jared, Jesus in a Bowl of Germs. Kick-ass song. Uh, what made you write it? Yeah, you know, inspiration comes to you in, in, in various different ways. I was thinking about, um, you know, just the idea that, uh, 
the Messiah, how ironic it is, you know, like I don't believe in any form of God or anything like that at all. Um, but ironic it, 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 it would be that, or it is that something uh, so sacred to so many people could conversely be responsible for so much war, so much destruction, so much everything. I mean, uh, as you fellas are well aware, I mean, it'd be hard put to it to find a, a cause that was responsible for more rape, torture, death, and uh, atrocity than, than religion or uh, than a, a belief in some sort of savior that trumps another person's savior. And uh, so, you know, a lot of times we got to, you know, read between the lines. If something, um, the, the label is correct or not, like what's in between the lines is what's in between the lines. And if this, this entity is responsible for death, war, and genocide, then maybe it's not a savior, so maybe it would have to be uh, an, an, an intended interjection. So what if scientists from the future uh, develop uh, a fake messiah because they needed this one instrument that would be responsible for as much destruction as possible to keep the population low uh, in a... In a con- so they develop... They develop this instrument, this Jesus in a, in a bowl of germs like hybrid corn, and they send it back in time, and it creates all these uh, counter-arguments and these counter-philosophies between the different people that are here. It splits off into a bunch of different sects, sect S-E-C-T, who will all uh, one day be killing each other and taking turns being in control, and you have population control in the form of religion. Yeah, and you know, I said it's a song. Is that what you consider that particular work? Is that a song? Is it a poem? How do you how do you view that? It's a piece. It's uh, I guess it's it's a song now. You know. Yeah, it kind of comes across that way with the background music, but I mean, yeah. at the same time, yeah, it sounds like you could do it a cappella, almost like I Def Jams. What's that? A cappella. So it's almost like <laughs> Def Jams. Yeah, with Def Poetry. Have, have, Def Jam Poetry. Yeah, have you ever uh, have you ever gotten on Def Jam Poetry, the uh, the Russell Simmons show? I have not. I have a lot of respect for what they do. Um, I've I've never uh, I've never sent them a tape. Um, it's a it's a real interesting thing in the, in the world of poetry slam. There's a lot of people who are uh, willing to slit their own mother's throat to get up on that show. Really? Um, yeah, I kind of I kind of stayed out of it, not because. Uh, you know, not because I, 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 to tell you honestly, when they first came out, I, I didn't like it. Um, you know, I, I didn't really, I haven't seen too much of it. I, did, I didn't like the way that it made everybody uh, jump, step in line. And, and it seemed to me that it was showcasing a type of poetry uh, that I felt was um, hyperbolic. But I, I did a full 180 degree spin. And I think that they're important and uh, fantastic and wonderful. And, and I support them. It's almost and, uh, it's almost a little mainstreamy, right? Uh, but I mean, sl- slam is like that now. We're gonna we're in, in danger of varying, uh, veering off into a whole other crazy argument that I don't want to get into. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it is kind of it's funny. It, it it's just it's funny that that, that, that you say that. But my 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 neighbor across the street is a uh, is is a poet, and uh, in fact, he's written a book, and he uh, he's friends with uh, you know a lot of the prominent slam poets out there. His name is Sean Burke, and you can get his book at Amazon.com. It's called uh, Crumbled Receipts and uh, Pizza Boxes, and uh, just look up Crumbled Receipts. And we have some of his his work on FreeThoughtMedia.com and embedded in our shows and places. But it's very uh, good. It's very good. Yeah, but but I mean, he said the same thing about that the Russell Simmons deaf poetry jam, which is that he didn't like it at first, and in fact, the reason why he didn't like it was because he said that the poems were kind of cheesy. Being an outsider and not being part of the the scene, I, I love it. I mean, I'm I, the same way. I think this well, show kicks ass. I, I really enjoy like you know when people come out there and express themselves, and it gets you like motivated, in my opinion. And I th- I think it's all important. It's funny how you guys in the scene see things a little differently. Yeah, because I think it can do nothing but show people this form of art that. You know, the masses don't really hear that often. It's not embedded into our culture the way that, say, pop music is or something. So, or hip hop. And it could do nothing but help you guys out. Of course, a lot of you guys are nothing about money and a lot more about, you know, message only. So, of course, and, and of course unfortunately, money is the means for the message often enough. It's not. It's a, it's a double edged uh, 
uh, rapier. It's a double-edged message from a, a, a fanatic nutcase in power. I'm being clever and stupid at the same time, but I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I totally agree. They totally won me over, and I'm all about it because that's, for me, the manic expressive agenda is recycling is important. Go vegan, consider adopting a child and vote based on research. You know, I'm, I'm a social worker and an, art, an artist at the same time, and, and those, that's what I'm all about, and that's that show brings issues of classism, racism, misogyny, homophobia. It brings all of that into the living rooms of people all over the country, and that's what won me over, the fact that they're doing that. And it's a, it's a goddamn shame that in the world of poetry slam, in the beginning, when so many of the, the poets saw Def Jam as something that would boost their career, they were all about it. And now that they realize that uh, it's, you know, for uh, a tier of performer that they're not necessarily on, uh, now they're all bashing uh, Def Jam, and it sounds like your your friend in the beginning uh, didn't didn't say that it, it it seems, and now that uh, he recognizes you know what it does and everything, he's all about it. So he you know he's he's a ladder climber. He's somebody who's uh, appreciating what's going on and and, and respecting uh, you know the the community uh, of building or the idea sharing that it's capable of. You know, and I think that's great. What's his name again? Because I'll check out his stuff. Yeah, his name is is Sean Burke. And uh, in fact, I'd be glad to read a little something. Yeah, go ahead. You know what? Let me let me do that. I'm, let me let me read. Let me read one of his pieces. Would you mind, Jared, if I uh, if I read a, a piece from him? Let's do Sean Burke some justice. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, what, I'll, I'll read a piece from him then. Well, let's say he's a buddy of mine. And, and, of course, the audience has probably heard this already on the freethoughtmedia.com stream. It's called Cell Division. And he, his wife worked at, as a school teacher at, at a Catholic school. And she had a miscarriage. She got pregnant and had a miscarriage. And uh, she was just totally distraught, stressed out. To her, it was as if uh, her mother and father died all at the same time. It was, she really took it hard. And she took time off from work for it. And the church came to her later and said that, uh, well, they doctor pay. And she wanted it to be acceptable time off because you get time off for funerals and deaths in the family. And uh, they, yeah. they didn't give that to her because there was no... The church? F- yeah, the church didn't give that to her. They doctor pay. The whole thing. They didn't give her a single day. Sorry for laughing, but I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. The yeah, church. Jesus Christ, exactly. And so the, the whole thing is, you know, the church is telling us, you know, not to abort babies because they are living people. They are, you know, alive. Life begins at conception. And if, if that's the case, then what she experienced in her family was a death and that right. she should get that time off. She shouldn't have right. docked pay. Come on, man. You're going you're gonna to carry life inside of you for nine whole months and plan this event around this being that's going to change your life. And then the miscarriage happens. Right. I mean, that's... Well, this this is actually it happened through three months, but that nevertheless, it's still it's still the same thing. Life begins at conception, and so the blatant hypocrisy in the church is just seething off of this piece. And I'll try to give it some justice here and read read a piece from my my close friend Sean Burke. It's called Cell Division. I blame you for Catholicizing my childhood and for ostracizing my father for how he stood in the middle of your choir loft, his Jewish voice giving new meaning to your cathedral hymns. While my mother played the role of silent saint in pastel hospital scrubs, her stethoscope, her crucifix breathing life into lungs of drug addicts and geriatric hypochondriacs in a 20-year loop of emergency room drama they could never capture on television. Let that shit slide and still demand our weekly donation in pink, yellow, green, blue envelopes, some mortgage payment never to be late. But I'll stop for a moment to ask a serious question. Father, Father, I have a question. Father, when does life begin? He reaches for his collar, white and tight against his righteous neck, searches for how to answer and pulls out soapbox number one and climbs on top as if at a pro-choice rally. This crusader for life spouts proudly, life begins at conception, and I'm set off. So that my wife and I are not sinners in the eyes of your religion. We've been right in our recent actions and our joyous decision to jump forward in our minds and anticipate the life that we would hold. To look forward in time and dream dreams of watching her grow old. Attach feelings and possible names and baby room decorations in only three months time. Your righteous answer freed us from any of these crimes. And now I'm on the offensive and I'm about to attack. See, Father, there's two fucking answers to that question. So I'll ask again, Father. Father, when does life begin? See, my wife and I have dedicated our lives to educating children, 
to elevating children in their minds, to spending countless hours teaching them to read and write, to think critically and choose what is right. And no thanks. I know it's a noble profession. And here's where I go off. You've cut my wife's fucking paycheck in half like she's been on some Caribbean getaway for the past two weeks and you can't believe she'd do such a thing? Well, she didn't, father. And see, I'll ask again, father, when does life begin? And so he checks the manual, the one that answers questions more financial. He looks at me and asks, well, was there a funeral? In that case... There's been funerals in our minds every day since two weeks ago. And no, we didn't choose your church. It was too overpriced. Yes, Father, there's been funerals. We didn't need you to oversee. No quasi-spiritual man could tell my wife and me reasons why our daughter never had the chance to breathe, why we won't have the opportunity to see her in sundresses, in prom dresses, in wedding dresses. And, and now she's looking down, little infant wings aglow. And at only four months, she does know. But do you, Father, when does life begin? That's the piece. Yeah, tough stuff, man. Yeah. So, and that's not actually in his book, Crumbled Receipts and Pizza Boxes, available at Amazon.com. That is actually available at our website, RationalResponders.com, and just look up the Show Guests and Musicians Forum, and uh, and you'll see that piece along with a few others. And, and if you really want an audio of Sean performing that, I can get it to you. Just uh, send me an email. Yeah, he did a really good job with that. I like that a lot. And it's really touching, uh, especially to someone who's lost a brother. In fact, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll just have that posted. I'll post it on the uh, on our website, so that'll be available to download. Thanks for letting me do that, Chad. That brings up uh, so many different points, and I know that you fellas are about pointing out, uh, you know, hypocrisies and, and contradictions. You know, uh, one of the things along the same line as, as Sean's poem that, that just fascinates me wildly is uh, so many anti-choicers who are willing to uh, take their kids out of school for the day to go to uh, some anti-choice rally or get everybody in their church out to go to an anti-choice rally. Um, I like how I, you classify I, that, anti-choice, as opposed to pro-life. Or, or like even like anti-woman. Yeah, I like that. I really do. I, th- I think that's a good classification for it because if you think about it, pro-life is just so anti what they stand for. Which leads me to the point I'm coming to is that if they, are, if they were pro-life, then I would see them where I work, down at DCYF. I would see them uh, being interested in, in uh, fostering a child uh, who is three years old and, and is going to be raised in an institution. And, um, you know, the first thing out of a pro-lifer's mouth is, a oh, part of me, see, you, you fellas said pro-life and put it back in them, put their linguistics back into my head. The first thing out of an anti-choice's mouth is, uh, you know, you don't have to have an abortion. You could give it up for adoption. You could give it up for foster care. And I've been a social worker for five years, you know. Uh, you don't want to know what happens in foster care. Physical abuse in foster care is insane. Uh, depending on where you are, it's, it's, a, it's higher than 50%. Um, and, it, you know, children are, are moved, the, the classification, the work that you have to go through to get certified to be a foster parent is, is ridiculously uh, low, small, it's easy to do, and I'm not criticizing because there are some fantastic foster parents out there, but there are thousands of people who get into it, uh, into foster care only for the for the check and only to take advantage of the children. The numbers don't lie. The rate of sexual assault and physical assault in foster care is staggering, astounding. Uh, People don't want to see it and they don't advertise it because they really don't want us to know about it. But if anti-choice is we're really pro-life, I would see them fostering children. I would see them getting involved in, in adopting a child. And I'm not talking about a healthy, white, clean, perfectly brand new, uh, two month old infant or three month old or four month old. I'm talking about the kids that need it the most. The toddlers, the five year olds, the six year olds, the seven year olds, all the way up to the young teens who've, who've been, uh, you know, assaulted physically and sexually in eight different places, eight different placements before they were even 12 years old. Those are the kids that need help. And if you really were pro-life, then you'd be trying to do something to take care of the people that were already here instead of forcing children here that you're not even willing to take care of. You also also wouldn't see these pro-lifers supporting wars? No. You wouldn't see them supporting the death penalty? So, uh, yeah, the hypocrisy is, it sees from everything they do. 
Uh, they're they're walking hypocrisy sticks. Like every pore of them just excretes it. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's and, and they they're just a lot. They're just so unaware of it. Yep. Yes, I chose from now on. You'll consider that instead of saying. Yeah, actually, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start saying that. Um, yeah, and I had I had in the past, uh, you know, said anti woman or anti woman's rights. I think I think anti choice is a lot. Yeah, anti choice is fine. Anti woman's rights, uh, anti woman. It's 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 all the same thing. I mean, the fact that they're pro life, they're they're not pro life. You know, like you said, if they were, if they were pro life, they would be all of these other things. Right. So they're clearly not. That's not what they are. They're more. Uh, well, they're pro hypocrisy, pro ignorance. You're, they're pro uh, killing. How can I interpret the Bible to fit whatever needs I want? Yeah. <laughs> so they're pro, they're pro restriction. You know. Jared, earlier you were talking about your veganism. Uh, that's going to be a hot button issue for us, I think, on the show here. In a yeah, few a weeks, bit. we're going to have a friend of ours on who's a uh, who's a nine eleven conspiracy theorist, a Satanist, and a vegan all at the same time. So this should be an interesting show. His name is Ophidius, guys. If you check him out, and he hangs out with us in the chat room during our show. In fact, if you're listening in live right now on our stream, go to www.rationalresponders.com. Join us in the chat room. We're in there hanging out. In order to be in the chat room, you have to be a registered member of our site, which is free. Just register for our site and. Look for your confirmation email, and if you don't get one, that's probably because I confirmed you on the back end. So uh, mm -hmm. definitely come visit us. But yeah, I personally, well, I'd love to be a vegan, but not necessarily because to think that I'm killing animals, sentient animals, is it can be tough. Uh, Rook actually has this interesting argument uh, um, that yeah. uh, that plants feel pain. Uh, and I, you know, while I think there might, there may very well be scientific data to back that, I, I think we'd all have to agree that that, that sentience, that ability to, you know, perceive things, just the fact that you have eyeballs and you actually can, you know, look at your killer, uh, is a little bit different than a plant say. And, and of course, Mike, our partner, who's not here today, he's a proud carnivore. So <laughs> allow me, allow me to restate my position. I'm not against anybody who's a vegan or a vegetarian. Ne I neither just, am I. I just feel I just feel that some of the some of the reasons they like they put out there to me are a little bit like like I would say hypocritical, but I won't. It's like uh, like I said, plants do feel pain. You know, there's still there is still a sent sentience around plants. You know, they're living beings, and we're still killing them. Well, then they're, they're living beings. That's for sure. We're, and, we have to kill life, right? And and to me, you know, we are we are biologically engineered like through evolution to be omnivores but I, I, we I, have to eat meat and vegetables to live well that's the thing that we don't have to eat it at this point we don't have to eat it and that would be jared's argument it but but certainly that is how that's how we got our brains to this point exactly without eating meat we would have never evolved to have a brain large enough to be able to contemplate should we just eat vegetables or meat right you know and so I, and I feel but i also feel like in a, you hop in yeah interrupt me Look, did I did I cut you off, Rook? No, no, it's all right. Really, uh, you're you're the guest. Obviously. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, I, I don't even know who I am. Anymore. We were just getting the ball rolling. <laughs> Why is it that you're a vegan? What does it mean to you? Do you recognize some of the arguments that plants also are alive? So, what are you doing differently between you know not killing a pig and killing you know a cucumber? You know, <laughs> 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 you know. Seriously, uh, answer some of those for us. We're talking about. Science, because I, I noticed you mentioned the uh, um, studies uh, talking about uh, meat proteins being directly related to, to, to brain gro growth. We'll get back into that in a second. But if we want to talk about science, there are five classifications of all living things. Animal, plant, fungi, monera, and protista. Um, uh, plants, uh, part of the thing that separates plants from animals is the fact that they have no central just because you don't have a central nervous system doesn't mean that you're not alive. But if you don't have a central nervous system, then you don't uh, you don't have uh, ad advanced stimuli. Plants do respond to physical stimulus, but it's not the same as having uh, a sensor uh, sensor sense receptors all over that can understand the type of thing like uh, like torture, etc. There's also a major difference in the in the cells um, between having a cell membrane. Animals have a cell membrane in every cell, and uh, animals have a cell wall which is filled with cellulose. It certainly don't uh, record or register uh, pain in the same. Uh, Advanced way that that, that that animals would. Right. Is the uh, the survey that links meat protein to brain growth? 
that is, that's, that's theory. Um, and it, it's something that we would all have to do a lot of research on ourselves before we take somebody's, uh, word for that. I myself, um, am not against the idea of hunting and fishing. I don't do it. I won't do it. I've been vegan, uh, for nine years now. Um, the reason that I, that I changed my eating habits was not because I was grossed out by meat or because I thought it was totally wrong to, to eat meat or whatever. I do think eating meat, uh, and hunting is natural. But, um, the same way that we are not responsible consumers, the same way that we start wars and don't understand how it affects us, the same way that we prove the earth through fact and carbon monoxide is the same process that we use towards getting our food. He, and people today in the United States and in Europe and Japan have no idea where their food comes from. They don't realize that it's injected with uh, hormones, that it's injected with chemicals. They have no idea that where their chickens uh, and their poultry comes from, that these animals sometimes have their beaks ripped off while they're still alive, that you have uh, maybe a 100 chickens stuffed in a cage the size of a closet. They don't realize that uh, animals are put on conveyor belts while they're still alive and certain parts of them are stripped off. They're not aware that in certain slaughterhouses they have uh, devices like a rape rack where the thing is tied to it and hung upside down while it's still alive. Um, this is not anything near the natural cycle. This is the earth is not, it cannot sustain uh, a type of industry where 5 million head of cattle in one place all corralled in ass to head. That's not the way that uh, the earth evolved and it's not natural. And I think that if you want to go out and eat meat, I'd say I have respect for that if it's done in a real way, but we don't know what it means to kill something, to stand in its blood, to actually take its life, to actually strip the meat off of its bone and understand what it, what it really means to, to take that life for your own survival. Uh, we're a lazy, apathetic, uh, sidestepping bunch of consumers, and, uh, and we have no, whenever we don't understand the process that we're using, I think we get into, into great danger. Yeah, Jared, you make an amazing argument and it's a different argument than mainstream veganism makes and right, uh right it's it's completely different i mean basically what you're saying is that if i went out and uh had you know a cow farm and uh i had you know whatever 10 cows on my cow farm and uh you know i killed one every uh three months and froze you know the meat and used it to you know supply meat for my family and uh you know i had good grass you would have no problem with that what your problem is is that this cow the real cow farm has 30,000 cows on it that the cows are like uh their legs are stripped off of them on a conveyor belt uh you know while they're still alive which of course isn't isn't the process i'm sure how a cow is killed but there are animals you know that that receive this t type of torture and it's because we have so many mouths to feed that that it's just gotten to the point where it's you know you don't take each cow on an individual basis and say you know okay uh this this cow is now going to feed my family for six months it's this cow is you know six dollars at shop you know right, yeah and uh it's, it's torturous what they go through as compared to what they should go through if we were just hunting and killing for our own need right. individual need when i was over in europe i'll never forget this um the family that I was staying with in Portugal uh, had um, each each member of the family. There was three brothers had a pig that was given to them by their mother who had died. And when the pig got old enough, they went out, they 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 killed the pig, and then brought it back into the into their home, hung it up on um on one of those hooks in the kitchen. All right, had a butcher come up to the house, butcher up the pig, and then. And then we they we ate like the entire pig like there wasn't a piece of the pig that was left over except for maybe like the stuff that was like inedible but we even ate the skin and like um you know that's that to me is what should be happening as opposed to you know what you were talking about like slaughtering animals like on a conveyor belt you know uh, I'm like you know I'm a hunter I like hunting I, I I eat everything I kill you know I have I have like venison fridge and stuff like that yeah. you know and then uh, you know I I respect I respect when I'm killing I don't do it for pleasure or sport, you know, I just, I, it's just, uh, you know, I think that, that, as you said, that's natural. Um, yeah. 
You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to play uh, Two's rant on hunting here. Okay. Two is somewhat famous atheist within our community. He has an awesome rant on hunting, and by no means is he a vegetarian either. Uh, but uh, this is a funny little rant. I'll play it now. We'll be right back. Last week, you guys got an earful about militant vegetarians and the stench they bring to the collective quality of human thought. And like I said, if you're not in one group, then most of the time, people will assume you're in the opposite group. So inevitably, when people hear what I think of vegetarians, I get some Republican Dukes of Hazard reject patting me on the back and saying, You know, you're all right. Why don't we go out hunting sometime? Hey, that's a good idea. Though if you don't mind, why don't I start by blasting a few rounds of buckshot into your stupid ass? I'd much rather get myself a six point Budweiser drinking bush supporting inbred hick. At least I'd be doing the human gene pool a favor that way. That's right, I'm not a vegetarian or a murderer. Okay, so you call it hunting. Strange though, when some raving pro-lifer stalks a doctor and kills him, that's murder. The only difference is pro-lifers are retarded from birth. You idiots fried all your brain cells sniffing up cans of WD-40 in front of hee-haw. I do not understand the desire to blow another life form to bits just because you can. Just because you have the power to do something doesn't mean you have to do it. You don't have to jump into a vat of boiling goat sperm just because you happen to be able to. You could grab that stapler and staple your balls together, couldn't you? Or try to sell photographs of you anal raping your brother's livestock to a Texas state trooper. Why don't you do one of those things instead? That way you're the only idiot who gets fucked up and not some forest animal who's never even heard of Roy Clark or Buck Owen. Oh, I've heard plenty of reasons why you do it. It connects me with the beauty in nature. What's the point in beauty if we can't find some way to shoot more holes into it than the plot of Mission to Mars. How about I hunt you down and connect your face with the beauty of my titanium baseball bat? Put a good sized dent in your cranium and at least it'd make a good cup holder. How about this? It's the thrill of the hunt. Ooh, that pisses me off more than anything. Some guy who thinks that hiding in the bushes with a rifle and smeared with grease paint makes him more of a man. Get over it, Hiawatha. You may think you're some big badass, but without that gun, those cute little forest animals will kick your ass. That's right, let's see how tough you feel when a fluffy little raccoon walks up and bitch slaps you across the face. On your knees, biatch! Besides, people who openly admit that they get a thrill out of taking life need to be drugged by the balls from the back of a jeep for a while. That's just sick. I mean, okay, where's the thrill? You aim a long stick at an animal. You pull a little trigger and it makes the animal not move anymore. Sounds pretty damn boring to me. I'd have more fun watching old ladies' boobs clap together while they're on the Stairmaster, personally. There is is no thrill of the hunt. The thrill is in you being able to go out into the forest and wave the all-powerful arm of humanity like the touch of death and remove life from whatever crosses your path with little more than a thought and a twitch. It's a power trip and that's all it is. Yeah, your woman got all uppity on you so now you have to leave the trailer and go out into the woods to play God. And you call that hunting. You know what I call it? A redneck with a small penis. You've got to carry around a big gun to remind you that you're male because if you had to tell by looking between your legs, then it'd be too easy to forget. You think it makes you look sexy, don't you? You think a woman's gonna see Bambi's head on your wall and get all moist over you. No wonder you haven't been laid in 12 years. Well, that and the stink. How many lives have been taken now over your shriveled little needle dick? Do the world a favor and find a way to make your penis seem bigger that doesn't involve destroying things. Like, get a girlfriend with small hands. Wear a strap on or something, for God's sake. Just because these animals are running around with dangling sets of Malehood that makes yours look smaller than Keanu Reeves' acting range doesn't mean you have to kill him. You're not going to be able to kill everything that has a bigger dick than you, especially with the way those rabbits multiply. <laughs> Ooh, oh, 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 what do you think of that? Tell you what, Billy Bob, you want to kill small defenseless creatures? Grab a bar of soap and kill that micro society of bacteria that's living on your stinking beer stained redneck ass, okay? That should really get you off. And okay, you know, there's some of you out there who insist that killing animals is okay as long as you use it for food and put all the parts to some use. Well, you guys aren't mega slime like these other guys, but I'm still pissed off at you. You've got good intentions. Now, if you just had more than half a brain, you might be onto something. I guess that means that I can rip off your leg, and as long as I make a jock strap out of it and beat you senseless with what's left, then it makes it okay, right? I've heard people refer to it as thoughtful hunting. Yeah, just what is the most thoughtful way to murder an animal? I'll tell you what it is. Don't fucking shoot it in the first place! Last week, I said that killing was necessary to survive. 
that doesn't mean it's good. It's a sad thing that life has to emerge from death, but right now, the world already has its quota of death to keep everyone alive. It's called the meat section at the grocery store. There's no point in taking even more life. It's necessary to kill so we can eat, but we have to use that responsibility wisely. Killing an animal for food when the local Safeway is completely stocked with meat is just as senseless as killing an animal and leaving it there. In all of nature, we are the only ones who are capable of choosing to protect and care for species other than ourselves. You want to exercise your superiority over the rest of nature? Then do the things the other animals can't do. Care for them even though you have the power to destroy them. This is to your tree-hugging, ranting griffin, and that's all I have to say about that. All right, Greek, that was two was Hunter Rant, and we're back with Jared Paul, and we're actually going to hop right back into another song. Brooke, do you know that today's show is brought to you by the letter V? I did not. Yeah, today's show is brought to you by the letter V. For Vendetta. Little Sesame Street reference there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, today's show is brought to you by, uh, by the letter V for... V is for vegan. There yes, you go. that is right. Today's <laughs> show is brought to you by the letter V, and V is for vegan. This song is called ABCs for Roger by Jared Paul. Check him out at myspace.com forward slash Jared Paul, and we will be right back. My mother came to this country at age eight when her father moved the family to find work. She had to leave her home and forsake her native speech. She taught me my ABCs in this language while watching Mr. Rogers in Sesame Street. And although I am choosing not to have children of my own, the ones that I adopt will learn the same through symbols like these. A is for agriculture, which is better than cattle deforestation. It takes 12 million metric tons of grain to feed and raise 3 million metric tons of edible beef. Take that same fuel and give it to human bellies, you could feed four times the people and prevent the slashing and burning of nearly 100% the forest. E is for economics, energy, and evolution. Fail to see how these things relate, and our globe will choke on the gaggles of genomes we are greedy enough to make. Huge industrial juggernauts kill. There are 230 billionaires in existence. Total their wealth, and you've got more money than the combined asset of every other person on Earth. Billionaires. All colors and cultures from all across the land. Billionaires from the United States, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and Japan. All blue-blooded, white-collared, with apathy-colored eyes. Now go back and hold on to I, because I is important. Like conservation, contraceptives, recycling, and research. L is not for love of poetry, it's for logistics. If 5.9 billion people becomes 30.6 over the next 25 years, there will be no room for you to run, farm, or breathe. That may not be enough to scare you into changing your daily routine, but as for me, I am terrified. Now, observe. P is for police officers who are overworked, <laughs> underpaid, and undertrained. Now hear me out. If the only people applying at the police academy are football players who weren't good enough to make it in college and ex-military men with a propensity for violence, then the only people holding guns and the name of the law will be football players who weren't good enough to make it in college and ex-military men with a propensity for violence. Question your goods, who makes them, where they come from and how they're distributed. You have a relationship with all of these things. If someone or some earth is being fucked over in the process by which your goods get to you, you are ultimately responsible for any harm done. R is for responsible consumers. Separate their trash unfailingly, all paper, plastic, and glass. V is for vegan, and that's where it's at. Which one of the following is the figment of your fucking imagination? Is it A, Superman has x-ray vision? Or is it B, diamonds are mined by black slaves in present-day Africa? where servants are subjected to several layers of X-ray radiation every single day just to make certain that no one is stealing. You can make a difference by not purchasing slave diamonds to symbolize your love and its meaning. Z is not for Zion or Zachariah, it's for Zenith. If you and I sacrifice our surplus till everyone has what they need, then we can reach it. Now they say that at poetry slams and protests, you are preaching to the choir, and that our real goal should be to get the ideas presented in this forum to the outside world but you are not the choir. You are not the fucking choir. I don't see you working as hard as possible. I don't believe that you're doing everything that you can. Evolution has to move faster than this. Z is not for Zion or Zachariah, it's for Zenith. If you and I sacrifice our surplus till everyone has food, medicine, and a bed, 
then we can reach it. And we are back with Jared. That was excellent. Thank you very much. Th- that's a nice little kitty rhyme. It is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> c- can you give us a little uh, a little background to that piece? Yeah, well, there's um, uh, the name actually escapes me at the moment, but obviously I'm not being uh, fucking revolutionary by having an alpha, you know, a poem that goes through the letters of the alphabet. There's actually a, a classification for that specific type of poem, and I forget the name at the moment. Yeah, it was interesting the way that you did it. You've embedded, like, for example, the first word is like A is for agriculture. The first sentence is A is for agriculture, which is better than cattle deforestation. I mean, you, you've kind of got to read in between the lines there. Right. He doesn't give us every letter, but yet the alphabet is done in that way. Better cattle deforestation. You get the point. And we'll post the lyrics up uh, on our website uh, in addition to you being able to check out the lyrics at myspace.com forward slash Jared Paul. But Jared, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Back to your point. They, you said the name was escaping you right now. For the poem that uses letters of the alphabet, I, for, I forget what the name of that is. But uh, there, there's a guy, uh, and I don't really go into this very often, but there's, there's a guy named Roger Bonaire, a guard, and he's one of the best at what, what we do as far as, uh, you know, spoken word is concerned. And, uh, you know, he, he has an alphabet poem, which is fantastic. Uh, uh, a is for Africa, B is for black, and C is for culture. Um, and it goes all the way down down the line. He, he says some fantastic things. Um, and, you know, he, he's been a big influence uh, on me uh, in, in that regard. And, uh, you know, I I, <laughs> I kind of wrote it uh, for, for him. It, it covered a whole bunch of issues that I wanted to cover. And uh, and I thought he'd get a kick out of it if, if I, uh, you know, if I did my own spin on it and I wanted to, to, to throw that out there for him. Um, it rook, uh, yeah. you know, you know, we, we got down in, in, into, into hunting and talking about all the different things. I, I, I really, so uh, the idea rolls around in my head all the time. You know, it's like we are now at the point where we have a relationship with, with everything that we touch, you know, yeah. with, uh, the animal that died for our food, the person who cut it up the person who put it in a package, the person who designed the package that it's going to be shipped in, the shipper, the trucker, um, the person who sells it to the store, the person who ships it from the truck into the store. You know, we have a relationship now with all of these people. And any time that our dollars, uh, you know, you vote with your dollar, it, the, the ruling class or the industrial military construct, the, the people who run the show, whatever you call them, they don't understand our vote. They understand our dollar. So every time you you buy something, you're you're, you're voting uh, with the only ballot that they understand, which, which is currency. And any time you know we give our our, our money to uh, a particular uh, industry or uh, outfit, that that the process destroys the earth to to get the animal or to get the profit. Uh, you know we we are also um, we are also about that. And I mean, you, I don't know if you guys have uh, it's the thought I'd. Uh, come across to either of you, but I mean, you know, if you listen to my stuff, it, it's really aggressive, it's really assaultive, and you would think that a lot of people out there would be like, what, to this guy? You know, he's angry, and he's, he's screaming at me left and right, uh, and I think part of what's allowed me to to sort of pick up steam and pick up momentum is the idea that it's kind of apparent through my work that I'm, I'm not placing myself above that I certainly consider myself to be part of the problem. And I certainly consider myself uh, to be in an area where there's, you know, vast room for, uh, for improvement. And I, you know, I say that at the, at the end of that piece is like, you know, we're not the choir. Um, the same way that uh, I, I look at um, the neocon who's trying to tell me that, you know, my kids who are in DCYF have free will and they have a free choice and that it's, you right. know, they don't have to, leave a shitty life just because they were uh, abused and, and, and starved and gone through all these horrible conditions. It's just the, the flip of that, it, it is true. Most of the time when somebody is racist or somebody is homophobic to the point where it makes my blood boil and I feel like my, my skull is going to pop off of my head like a cork, they're not choosing to be racist. They're not choosing to be homophobic. 
they've just been led down this particular path where they can't understand or they're not in a place right now where they can understand it hasn't been shown to them in, in, in the right way where they realize what they're doing is, is really hurting people. It's like looking at a rat in a maze, you know, like you, you're standing above the maze and watching the rat struggle trying to find the cheese and you're like, you know, stupid rat. If I was in that maze, I would have found the cheese 15 minutes ago. That's that's deep. That's some. Uh, that's, and I agree with you on some of those points. Uh, actually, all the points that you just made. Uh, one in particular is you know about the choir. Yeah, I was I was just talking to Sapien and Mike last night that uh, you know there's a huge you know people always talk like oh you know you're preaching to the choir you know your your most of your your uh, listenership right now are atheists you know why don't you expand and talk to other kinds of people and I say you know what a lot of those atheists are not getting up they're not taking a stand they're being you know dormant you know and that's and that's not that's not kind of, that's not doing anything you know non decision is still a decision but it's the wrong decision you know and it's better to make a, it's better to make a decision and have it be like end up being wrong than than not making a decision at all and and have nothing happen and uh you know like that's i i found that also um in your in your in your piece there and uh you know i thought i thought that was an excellent point um i i really agree with you on that i i, uh, I feel that a lot we're Je- working on it what's that no yeah, you're working. working all of us we're working yeah, they would keep this dialogue rolling uh, everywhere, and and you know, change. Some, something's got to happen. Something got to give. You know. Yeah. Listen, Jared. I know you got to get out of here. You've got some some activist work to tend to. But I'd love for you to perform the Workers' Moon for us and and lead us out of here. But I just want to thank you once again for coming on. Yes, thank you very much. And thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, that and that <laughs> that's what it's like. You know, uh, went to. Uh, a Senate hearing on uh, on clean elections on Tuesday. Uh, went out to Superior Court to watch uh, direct action for rights and equality. Uh, take the city to court over faulty legislation on first source. Uh, you know, ride ride your bike and hang out with your friends and family and enjoy your life. And then uh, go to a protest on Sunday and then write letters on Monday and, and go back to work. You know, it's it's a <laughs> it's a it's a it's a process, and I thank you uh, for for having me on here, and I I thank you for you know. Yeah, you're welcome like back anytime. Just, yeah, and thanks you know, thanks for thanks for your work, man, in yeah, the, in the community. I mean, you know, we need people like you, even if your you know agenda is slightly different than ours. We're really all on the same team, which is uh, you know people who are willing to stand up for what they believe in and uh, not lay back. You know, let the uh, the irrational people just run over us. And you know what I think is the most amazing and modest quality about you is that you're open to the fact that you know your position might not be uh, the uh, the the best position for other people. That you know, especially if it pertains to say veganism, that uh, that you know somebody else who chooses to eat meat, you know, based on the fact that they're raising a pig on their own, you know, is 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 more than acceptable. Um, you know, is is very uh well, is very noble of you uh and uh and respectable to be able to hold positions that you understand that others who have different positions and have justifiable uh well they could justify their position in their own way. Um that that's uh that makes you that much better of a person, man, and that that makes you that much better of a of a person to be out there and, and waking people up because obviously you're open to uh to somebody saying, Hey, listen, you know, uh you know, you you you're onto something but you're wrong in this aspect. And I, I see you as the type of guy who's willing to change based on uh the when facts uh hit you over the head, you know. Right. So a compliment. Right. Um Oh, we we can tell uh, the rational response listeners because you are listening to the rational response squad at the moment. Shoot, man, you ain't you ain't got to go vegan. I'd like you to, but at, at least consider you know looking at a uh, organic poultry and uh, a small farm beef, small farm poultry, as opposed to factory farm goods when you can. You know, um, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up right now that I'm I'm drinking a cup of equal exchange coffee at the moment. Uh, coffee is, a, you know, the same thing. We were just talking about goods. You know, there is equal exchange means that the farmers were, were paid a legit amount, and it's like that all the way down the line for almost every product. And I'm not going to ramble on here, but I just like to encourage the listeners to uh, consume as responsibly as possible. Most of the time, when you dig, there is there is meat out there that is organic, that is not from a factory farm. There is coffee, sugar, uh, dessert, and food and things that are. 
that are uh, not made from goods using slave labor like uh, coffee or, or bananas or sugar. And just, you know, dig into it if you're interested in finding out all the information's out there. Yeah, is there a specific website that you think that anybody, that you could steer anybody to, or should they just use your website as a start? Uh, I would say killercoke.org uh, is a good place to it's find out. Killer Coke, just like K-I-L-L-E-R-C-O-K-E? Dot, dot org. Okay. That's, that's some good thing. Uh, Coca-Cola kills or is responsible for the, the assault on union workers in Colombia. Uh, and every time you, you drink Coca-Cola or pay for Coca-Cola, uh, you're, you know, you're taking part in that. I would say. Is Pepsi Equal just Ex- as bad? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> okay. EqualExchange.org is a great way to find out about coffee because it's like the, I believe the second or third law. And we were just, uh, placing the boot down on the throat of farmers all over the world. <sighs> man, uh, democracymatters.org. And they're a big veganism site, I heard. Um, <laughs> oh, that was a democracy yeah. joke, man. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great, Jar. Um, you know, I think that gives the audience a lot to go and check out. Yeah, and, yeah I'm going to be looking at some of that, too. You know, obviously, these aren't positions that the Rational Response Squad holds unanimously, but what we do hold as a unanimous decision is that uh, you should look into just about everything out there and give it, you know, a chance, understand it, see if it's right for you. Uh, you know, we're all different and, um, uh you know, even Jesus. See if that's right for you. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe at the end of... See if things that there's evidence that they exist there are right go. for you. And of course, we know that uh, Coke Bill, exists. Bill so. O'Reilly, Bill <laughs> has told us to run away from people who don't think that way. So, All right. Well, uh, the Workers' Moon. You're going to lead us out of here, and uh, we are going to cut to commercial as soon as you're done. So, uh, so go ahead. Take it away, man. 12.01 a.m., November 3rd. 2004. Hope ran to the alley, plied the sewer cap and climbed below. Seven tears till she reached the face in the bricks and fell onto one knee, into the broken things. Closed her eyes, right hand over heart, and whispered, The choir sings, Hallelujah. In the blood of the Father, the Son, and the worker Jesus Christ, all men. The face shimmered. The voice came louder than ever before, and the walls of the city shook to all cities on earth. All sing. The choir boomed, locked in slave blocks in the blood of the Father, the Son, and the worker Jesus Christ, all men. The ancient text licked in the spits of Hebrew, Latin, Greek, and Old English, rephrased with each roll in the mouth of dust, were translated by Anglo-Saxon cabals called Holy, for an Anglo-Saxon king called James. Their words have been pregnant 500 generations, and their fruit is now born. All sing. The choir boomed, no count, regarding the will of the people shall be given, and no mason say Take his crown till the most chosen circles of wolf have performed the dance of the poison lily before this court in its entirety. All sing, no scepter be stoned before the scales stacked with the best bone drops, and no poobah may take his throne, but over the bones of the young and of the sick from here till the ice melts again. All sing, the choir boomed, hallelujah, in the blood of the Father, the Son, and the worker Jesus. Christ, boom! No penis less earthbound shall terminate her offspring, whether the seed in her belly is born of rape, or whether the seed of that rape was sown by her own father, all sing. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, avenging the blood of his servants at her hand. Hallelujah! But the fearful and the murderers, whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone that spit in the revelation unto the liar John for the Saxon James all men abominable is your brother called gay who riots in his flesh and your sister who will terminate a life within her their sickness is perjury in his name and their punishment shall be great boom the lamb must have its throat extracted and carcass dragged so that four out of ten wolf cubs may be granted everlasting luxury all sing the choir boom, hallelujah, all men. This land will remain silk at the expense of every island, for every 
island is our island. Its soil is this soil. Its fruit is our fruit. Hallelujah. The crowd of every village will know and shred before rods, beanbags, and rubber bullets. Boom! And every enemy of the Grand Council of the House of Mason will be destroyed for the protection of every village and every island which also belong to us. In the air, the water, and the land, all life shall buckle under our tools and their waste till the ice melts again. For the seventh of the great frost is in full fall, and it is not our charge to store the seed or tender of a dying land. All sing, the choir boomed, hallelujah, locked in slave blocks, boom, in the blood of the Father, the Son, and the work of Jesus Christ. All men, hope fled the sound of the face in the brick off her knees climbing down deep to a place where no light shines and curled up amongst the trash and the rust and the rats and she slept like a stone wow, wow. that was intense good fucking that shit was man. Good <laughs> shit 